Russia has begun to decommission old T-34 tanks from the 1940s, likely to use them in the war against Ukraine. This is a desperate move that shows the Russian armed forces acute shortage of armored vehicles. Footage of the T-34 was published by Ascent expert Intelskyzo on the social network X. The published video showed not only T-34s, but also IS-3 tanks and ISU-152 artillery units. All of this equipment was produced in the early 1940s for participation in World War Intelskyzo was able to identify the location where the video was filmed. It is the 392nd training center of the Russian armed forces in Khabarovsk. The arrival of DPRK troops was previously spotted there. While the Soviet rarity is currently at the proving ground, we should expect it to arrive at the front soon. The Russian occupation army is suffering huge losses, including in armored vehicles. Experts say there is an acute shortage of them at the front. It should be noted that the T-34 is a legendary Soviet tank from World War II. It was one of the most widely produced and successful tanks of that time. However, it is catastrophically outdated and is unlikely to be as successful on the battlefield as before. It has weak armor, poor firepower, and communication problems. In addition, the T-34 crew has significantly less chance of survival in the event of a fire strike than more modern tanks. Russia is forced to transfer military equipment to Ukraine that has been obsolete for several decades. The Russian army is almost completely destroyed. Soviet-era arms storage bases are one of the primary sources that still allow the Russian armed forces to fight despite massive losses on the battlefield. Russia has been removing supplies of tanks, armored vehicles, and artillery from these storage bases since 2022. The arms produced in the 1940s, 1960s, many of which were decommissioned many years or decades ago, have returned to the battlefield. The stored arms are also massively cannibalized for spare parts, which Russian arms factories and hundreds of field arms repair facilities utilize. These storage bases are not endless despite Russia keeping thousands of tanks and howitzers after 1991. Moreover, Russia cannot replenish these arms and material. If Ukraine can maintain a high level of combat intensity and the mounting level of Russian losses continues in 2024, it will be much harder for the Russian army to maintain its military power for offensive operations in 2025. That means the conventional Russian military threat to states other than Ukraine will become much more limited. Russian forces have advanced over a key waterway in the eastern Ukrainian stronghold of Chasivya, a Ukrainian military official said, marking a setback for Kyiv's embattled forces. The town of Chasivya, which had an estimated pre-war population of around 12,000 people, sits on a strategic hilltop and its capture would likely speed Russian advances deeper in the war-battered Donetsk region. The enemy managed to break into our line of defense, but there is no critical failure and we are not about to lose Chasivya. Fierce fighting continues now, a spokesman for Ukraine's 24th Brigade told state-run media. The spokesman Ivan Petrichak said that while Russian troops had crossed the canal on the eastern edge of the city, Ukrainian troops were containing the advance. Experts say that Chasivya is a new Bakhmut, for Russians, nearly 20,000 Russian mercenaries died fighting for Wagner Group, for the Wagner Group during the Battle of Bakhmut. Using the identification numbers of those killed, journalists were also able to determine that at least 48,000 prisoners fought for Wagner during this time. Dmitro Snyhiryov, a Ukrainian military expert, says that Chasivya is a hard target for Russians. He recalled that over the year of the Russian offensive in the Donetsk region, the Russian army has advanced 900 square kilometers. Currently, the Russians are solving the issue of reaching the administrative borders of the, of the Donetsk region, and they have been unsuccessfully solving it for a year of the Russian offensive. Let me remind you that the offensive has been going on since October 2023, not since May 2024. So the maximum advance of the Russians during the year of the Russian offensive is the corresponding preconditions for tactical success, a larger number of personnel, total enemy air superiority, and most importantly, the firepower coefficient, which, unfortunately, is in favor of the occupiers. 
So despite all these factors, as well as the corresponding delay in military and technical assistance from our partners, the maximum advance of the Russians is 900 square kilometers in the Donetsk region. The issue of getting to the borders of Donetsk region has not been resolved. He spoke about this on Espresso TV. Snehiryov believes that it will be difficult for Russian troops to advance. The Russians have quite serious defense lines of the Ukrainian defense forces ahead. We are talking about the Pokrovsk agglomeration, respectively the Slovyansk and Kramatorsk agglomerations, which are large industrial cities. And even though the Russians are currently using flanking tactics and the so-called small cauldron tactics, meaning that they are not engaging in assault operations directly in urban areas, we can say that further Russian advance in these industrial cities will take a rather serious period of time. Unless, again, there is an unclear nature of the rotations of the Ukrainian personnel, which, by a strange coincidence, will become known to the Russian occupiers. Unfortunately, a similar situation occurred during the battles for Avdiivka, Volodar, and other problematic areas of the front, which led to the Russian tactical successes. He emphasized 